Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? Good. 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 Is it hot enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Melting away. You're melting away. <laughs> oh, I know. I hope you're not disappearing too much. Uh, Gina's in the waiting room. Have you made me co-host? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Well, tonight is our hot spot. There's football on the telly. Um, I know not everybody's into the football, but tonight we are really delighted to welcome the one and only Mr. Martin Murray. Are you a football fan, Martin? Yes, I am. Yes. Lo and, love football. And who do you support? Manchester United. Oh, my gosh. This could yeah. be a, this, this could be a those are their kids as well. What? Oh yeah, the kids love it. What football? Love, love United. No, Ma yeah, no Leeds United. United. Leeds no, United. No, no. <laughs> Leeds United. No chance. I no know. Chance. I know that in uh, Martin's house there are Leeds fans and Man United fans, and I just want to know, Martin, who set up the goal that England scored last night to win the first match of the Euros? Who do they play for? Leeds. <laughs> Leeds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was lucky. No, we'll just, we'll just, what do you mean lucky? No, he was man of the match, wasn't he? Oh, oh God, no, he played. No, no, no. He played, played well. Really yeah. played well. No. A great player. No, it was, it was really, really good. Well, we've, so we've got a Leeds United fan in the room. We've got a Man U fan. And what, who do you support, Gina? Liverpool. <laughs> Joe's face. I suppose somebody's got to, haven't they? Yeah. Who do you support, do you support Linda? No one. Oh my gosh, that's. I, I only watch it. I like well, when the tournaments are on. I watch the tournaments, but I don't follow a team. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh no. I, my my blood pressure can't cope with it. Really. Like I've already <laughs> got a sore throat from last <laughs> night. Literally, I have a sore throat because I was shouting at the telly. Or oh, yesterday afternoon. I, I don't know what's matter with me. It's crazy. Anyway, tonight is our hot spot, and we have Gina here, who's often here, and Linda. And as I said, we've got Martin. We may be joined by another dad called Sam, but we thought, you know, it's Father's Day next Sunday. And Martin is a dad who comes to Daniel's, and in fact, he's becoming a volunteer at Daniel's then, which we're really excited about. And we thought it'd be really interesting to um, chat to Martin about um, being a dad and Daniel's then. Martin, can you remember the first time um, that you came to Daniel's then and how you felt? Uh, yeah, so the first time I came, obviously, was with Amanda and Maisie. And Maisie must have been a few months old. But um, I honestly had no idea what to do, how to interact with other parents and how to interact with other kids because I'd never done it. I'd never done it. And it was something I was never, ever around was children. So it was, uh, it was a big shock to actually... Uh, be around other kids that were, that wanted to play and I was like oh god <laughs> but, but but like now it's like oh yeah I'll play with you <laughs> you know wow but that's but that's because of your help and everything like it's uh now now it's now it's second nature now you know my gosh, that's really interesting. I do remember actually, Martin, one of the first times you came to the yellow, it was the old yellow pavilion, wasn't it? Yeah. And I remember you holding Maisie as a tiny, tiny baby. And I remember you saying, I don't I, I can't wait until she can talk to me and tell me how yeah. she's feeling. Yeah, and, and now like she won't stop talking. <laughs> yeah, she won't stop talking. <laughs> But I remember saying to you, Martin, Maisie is talking to you, but she's using a different language. And it's that thing, isn't it, that when they're babies, that they cry or just their behaviour, how their body is, you soon get to understand. Yeah. What they say you soon know that look when they're hungry or that look when they've got oh, a dead yeah. 
yeah it's like you soon learn like you learn quick <laughs> it was like you have to learn quick <laughs> you do you, you do to... yeah well we've been given a few questions that we're going to ask and gina i want you to be thinking of a question that you can ask martin because it's to... our job tonight is to interrogate martin as a dad and i have a question um well, and you sort of partly answered it, and it was that, were you prepared to be a dad? And how did you feel when you found out you were going to be a dad? Can you remember that far back? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Oh, my God, yeah. So we were actually sitting down, me and Amanda were sitting down talking, and Amanda had this little heart box, and I thought Amanda was, like, giving me sweets. I was so excited. <laughs> and then I opened up the box and I saw these two sticks. I was like, what the hell are these? <laughs> so I look at them and obviously it said like pregnant. And I was, I, I was speechless. Like I was so ex like, like, I can't describe that feeling. I was speechless and I was so happy, but I wasn't, I wasn't ready to be a dad. Like even, even though I said I was, and I'm so ready. As soon as we bought May, May um, like as soon as we bought May, uh, Maisie home, I cried because I realised our like our lives are completely different now, and and it literally changed in like six hours. Your <laughs> you know like you know like your life is is one is like you know your life is going this way but then as soon as that child comes it goes the complete opposite way it's a complete change wow yeah so i wasn't ready for it like i wow. thought i was but it was it was harder than i thought it would be wow and when you when amanda was pregnant did you do any sort of preparation we did. So in Norfolk Park, we used to go to these classes that would talk you through what to do when she's in labour and then when the babe, baby's born and what to do in, um, you know, like the first few months of their life. And we had so much information. Like, I felt like an expert that I was, that like I knew what to do. But when you're <laughs> actually faced with this child that, that that like relies on you to survive it completely changes your outlook and 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 and, and that you think my god this is responsibility that <laughs> i never knew existed but it's amazing how quick you adapt and learn wow i think linda's got a question about something about new dads yeah um what do you think is the hardest part of being a dad that's that's so tough because there's so there's many so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> no there is um oh my god yeah so the hardest part about being a dad me personally when Maisie was born I felt like there was no help for dads like I know Amanda was going through a lot as all women do you know their bodies have gone through a lot um and, you know like a mo you know like like it's a very traumatic thing to go through um mentally as well but for me i found it quite hard because i felt like there was no one that i could turn to and there was no help for me um and it's only recently that there has been help for dads um but that was the hardest part was realizing that there wasn't actually much help for me and um that I struggled to, that I struggled to cope because I didn't know who I could talk to, because yeah. it's, uh, we'll it's get a get towards the mum, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, and I just found it quite hard that I didn't know who I could speak to, and whether or not it looked silly that I was asking for help and that I was saying, yeah, I'm struggling. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. It, it was a long, it was a hard process, but we yeah. got there in the end. And a lot of people don't realise that men can get postnatal depression as well. That's how it kind of, yeah, like that's how it felt. Like I wouldn't say that I had it, but yeah. I probably had the closest thing to it, which probably a lot of dads do have. Is it like it is such such a shock, 
and me personally i felt like i didn't know like i didn't know who i could turn to you know yes i've got my fam you know like i've got family and friends but at that time you know you don't it's hard to explain like like you feel lost because yeah. no one's asking you how you are because it is such you know because you have to change a lot you know Wow, Martin, you articulate things so well. Linda, do you remember how your son-in-law was when I know I know you really can't speak on his behalf? Yeah. When well, I, I know before. one thing they're all aware of is that when Danielle got pregnant, she felt like she became a mum straight away because the baby was inside her. But she felt that like the Luke didn't actually become a dad until she was born. So she had a much longer space to prepare. And um, Luke, it took him months and months and months to actually even, you know, believe it was really going to happen. Um, but when he did, when, once she was born, I mean, he shocked everybody. He stepped up. Um, he was doing things we never thought, you know. So, um I, I really remember. I really remember that, Linda. And I think that's so, there's some really profound things you're saying here, all of you. Jean, I'm going to come to you. Have you got that question for Martin? Um, <laughs> but this thing about how when um, Danielle became pregnant, she became she felt like she became a mum straight away. But Luke only felt he became a dad when he held the baby in his hands. Can you relate to that, Martin? Yeah, the uh, the first child that I ever held was Maisie. And I think I think that's astounding. And I think I, I wonder how many dads would say that I reckon Martin, there's an awful lot. And whether it's the majority of men who have the same experience. I grew up in a family where my mum was the eldest of eleven children, my dad was the eldest of five children, and I always had little cousins that there was always babies around at various stages. Mm. There are lots of families, you know, if we live in different parts of the country and things like that, that you don't hold a baby. And I even yeah. remember myself panicking about how am I going to keep this child alive? And actually, my firstborn child was born uh, just before the Euros 96 final in Wembley. And I, he was due on the day of the final. And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, if I go into labour on that day, what, how am I going to get to the hospital? <laughs> I have to go in a helicopter. But he was born on a really hot day like today. And I was like thinking, how will I know if he's too hot or too cold? I had that pressure. And I can imagine what you're saying, Martin, is what a lot of people would feel um, when their baby's born. And oftentimes the midwife... Um, or the health minister often says, how's mum? But not that many people say, how's dad? Yeah, because when you're inside the hospital and, like, the baby's there and, and you know, you've got the midwives there that come in and check every so often, whatever, and you don't actually think about how hard it's going to be and how stressful it is, but as soon as you you know change her or him and then you get him ready to take home and then it's like as soon as you get home you realize oh my god like mm -hmm. like like you're because like you're not on your own but you feel like you are and that's how I felt I I like felt like if I'm left on my own with this child I don't know what I'm doing like I've <laughs> I've never held a baby I've never changed a baby fed a baby like I've spoken to babies, <laughs> you know, like which is easy, but mm. a, but actually caring for a child is, uh, yeah, it's um, like unless you're like unless you've done it, it's hard to explain. Like you, you know, like you guys will understand. Like it is it's a it's a surreal feeling. Wow, and it's like looking at you now. You've got two children now, Maisie, who's Four. Yeah. And Riley is one. Yeah. So um what is it? Um what do you what do you feel? What was it like having the second child after the first child? Did you feel more confident or 
or did you have a similar experience? I think I was a bit like, like I, like, like I, like I suppose I knew what to expect. Um, but Amanda's pregnancies were so different. Um, you know, like with May, like with Maisie, it was what I suppose you would dream a, you know, being pregnant and giving birth would be. It was quick. It was, I wouldn't say painless, but it was <laughs> quick, right? <laughs> quick. But with Riley, it was, Amanda really suffered and I didn't mm. know what I could do because because there was nothing that I could do to help her. And um, even the labour as well was really, really bad. Like I thought that, uh, like I thought Amanda had, you know, um, died during labour mm. because it was so bad because wow. um, she was in labour for so long wow. um, and her, her waters wouldn't break. And then mm. when they eventually did it, he got stuck neck um, out and oh. I thought Amanda had passed out. So I was like, oh my God, like what is going on? So there were two complete different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but when he was born, you know, it was like, I still cried, but instantly I thought, oh my God, like, I've got to check on Amanda. Um, but I felt more ready for it. But then when you take him home, you're then having to, yeah, you're like then having to like split your time, but you know, like because because it was hard on Maisie because she was, you know, for two, three years, it, it was all about her. And now yeah. all of a sudden there's this new child here yeah. that you have to give your attention to. Yeah. And it was hard as well because Amanda had really bad postnatal and it was very difficult to try and um like look after everyone I felt like I had to look after everyone because obviously I am dad and I am a husband as well so there were two two amazing experiences but two very surreal and uh life-changing wow. but now they're but now they're doing well and Amanda and, and like Amanda's doing well as well so wow. um wow yeah I think Martin like, what I do, about do you know, it's been a journey <laughs> and the thing is you ain't come to the end of it yet and I think that's the thing I remember someone saying to me oh I want to have my children young so they can grow up and then I can go off and do my own things and it's like well actually when you give birth to a child that yes they grow up and they might leave home but once you've got a child so I don't have to say this to you Martin but you always have a child you know what I mean and that love and that care yeah. it changes and there's just different challenges that come along the way. And yeah. I think what you've said before, I've heard you say about your experience within Daniels then, that you found out the benefit of having a community to look to for support and advice. And Gina, you're somebody who helps out at the toddler group at the Yellow when Martin and Amanda come with Maisie and Riley. Have you got a question for Martin that you've been wanting to ask, apart from why does he support Man United? <laughs> oh, we could be here all day. Don't exactly, we could be, we could be all, here all night. Now, what I was wanting, have you got any advice for new dads, maybe, that are in your, not in your situation, but that can be in your situation? Yeah. Um, do you know what? But yeah, um, it's... The only advice I could think of is that there's like it's it's okay to ask for help mm. and it's okay to feel like you don't know what you're doing because no one knows what they're doing no. when it comes to a child. You just get on with it and it's always good to ask for help and find other dads, particularly other dads, mm. because um, that's that's what I struggled with at the beginning was I didn't know many other dads that I could turn to to ask for help um but there are there's so much help out there now um and of course looking towards da um, Daniel's Den mm. because that is how I learned was from going to 
you know, go into the, um, you know, go into that. Um, uh, uh, yeah, because it because it helped me feel more yeah. com uh, confident being uh, being a dad. Mm. And I, I thank you for that, Joe. So thank you. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing about Daniel's then that we love it that often always people are going about, oh, your mum's in toddlers group. And I'm like, going, it's not a mum's in toddlers group. It's a parent in toddler group. And of course, yeah. grandparents and carers and all sorts. But I think encouraging dads to come and I think the thing that I loved about you, Martin, was that you used to come during the week you were, because you were at Flex, you know, different mm. shifts. Um, but we started a dad zone, didn't we? Oh, yeah. And Great. Yvonne and I were running that the first Saturday of every month, and we were trying to get out of the way and let you guys get on with it. And I remember when Yvonne and I were talking about dad zone, we were like going, oh, well, we'll have to sort of encourage a bit of conversation with the dads. Mm -hmm. But what? tell us what happened at dad zone, Marty. Can you remember coming to an actual physical face-to-face -face session of Daniel's then? Do you remember what, what like a what, what like a dad zone? A dad zone, yeah. Tell us for any dads who are watching or listening or thinking, oh I don't really I'm a bit unsure, but I don't want to go to a group where it's all women. What about dad zone? What's that all about? Oh it's great. It's like you're going to a like a lads that um to, to, like meet like meet like meeting up with mates but with kids and pizza and burgers. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. It, it was like a good hour or two away and just, you know, just like it, it, it like it felt more. How can I explain? Like it felt more relaxed. Like I know with the mums and dads, when it's the norm, like normal group, there's so much going on. But with the dads, it felt like we all, I don't know, it, it, it like just felt like we all sort of bond like bonded instantly it was fun yeah me and Yvonne used to laugh because it was like we had all on to keep you lot quiet if we were doing like the announcements <laughs> it was like so much talking going on yeah and I just think creating these spaces where dads and granddads can share with each other and a definitely a big feature of dad's own was food Oh yeah. I always remember Amanda saying, Oh, you can put any rubbish out on the table, they'll eat it, which I know is sort of against <laughs> our healthy eating sort of policy. But it was a really relaxed atmosphere. And I think one of the concepts behind Dad Zone was for children to see other male figures. Because some families, you know, there's not a lot of men around. There's often a lot of, you know, I don't know what this cliche about. Um, little children and women that actually the dads are as equally important if not you know and to have a space where you guys can just come and well it was a bit stereotypical wasn't it play football and do all sorts of things uh, and pizza. <laughs> oh, exactly yeah. Linda have you got have you got any burning questions for Martin I, I've well Gina nicked my one <laughs> so I've got another one though Let's talk about negatives. What would you say is your biggest joy of being a dad? Oh. <laughs> I, su I suppose the biggest joy of being a dad is, is like it sounds so silly, but is actually being a dad is, is like I look at how, like from my experience, how my dad was with me. And I want to give my kids the same love and affection that my dad gave me and my mom of course mm -hmm. but with dad um it's like I like I idolize my dad and I want my kids to idolize me so it's uh it's a big responsibility but it's but it's one that you look forward to do and uh yeah that's that's probably it Oh, I think that's... Sounds cliche and silly, but that's how it is. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> we asked you, um, you came and talked to the trustee. Well, I forgot where we talked about this, but you came out with something a few weeks ago that made me laugh so much because we've been doing these craft packs in lockdown. 
and you were talking about the craft packs and about the role of the handbook in the craft pack. Can you remember what you said, Martin? I, I feel myself like if I didn't have the book there, I wouldn't know what I'm doing because I mean, like, I looked at it all going, what on earth is this? But like, unless I've got like, like, like instructions, I'm very good at it. Yeah, and you were like, saying that. Yeah. Yeah, because like, Maisie looks at me like I'm an expert. I'm like, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I'm just following, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what this is. But yeah. Yeah. I think I, I love that as well, that part of Daniel's then sort of role is to empower parents, one, to enjoy parenthood. And that just beams all over you, Matt, in how you really enjoy being a dad. And... I'm just thinking about dads who are really struggling about how to get over that. It's okay to ask for help mm. um, and trying to find those sort of contexts like dad. So like, I think it takes a lot of courage to come yeah. over the door, doesn't it? And it's like, if the dads will come to something like Daniel's Den, I wonder, I'm just thinking to all of us, Gina, Linda, Martin in particular, what ways in which could we offer support to dads to let them know, you know, it's all right to feel really emotional or it's all right if you don't know what you're doing. I don't, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. How could how could you get we get that message out there? Like having tonight, having a discussion like this and you sort of sharing your thoughts, Martin, is great. Um, well, I think once, once things are back to normal and you're allowed to meet up, I think like like promoting a dad zone and either posters flyers or word of mouth or social media just to get dads to know that there are groups out there like mm -hmm. Dan daniel's den and it's it's so important to go to them because there's going to be other dads there that are probably going through the same thing that have gone through it and can can like like the best thing is is that we can offer advice because that's all i want wanted was just advice and to basically know that it's not just me that feels worry and that i'm scared to do this because 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 it is a big worry because you know you've got this new child you've got your partner as well that's going through a lot physically and mentally and it feels like a lot is left on the day and um, it's good to know that there are groups out there that can say, well, there's a lot left on us as well. We, we, yeah. we like just need to be more accepting of help, which is a big problem, which was what my problem was. I didn't want to ask for help because mm -hmm. I felt like it should be something that I'm not born to do, but I should know how to do it with no experience, which is impossible. They say at least, at least um, with a car, it comes with a manual. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no one child size fits all, is there? They're all different. No, screw. no, no we all have to learn somehow. Mm. It well, takes time, um, but we all get there. Yeah, yeah. one mum that I met at our first outdoor session on Wednesday, um, and I'd known her with her previous son, and she just come new with her, her new son, and she said, um, her son was recently diagnosed with autism and she, she said because she didn't know any other kids or any different she thought that was normal and now she's had the second child she just realizes how different he actually was you know mm -hmm. so she just thought it was normal because that's, that's the way kids were so unless you have something to compare it to yeah and I think I think it's been able to meet in a non-judgmental way isn't it and that's something about Daniel's Den that we try to promote as much as possible that, mm. you know, I always say, if you think you've got it sussed as a parent, you better look out because tomorrow your child's going to prove you mm. wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think that's the reality, isn't it? And I don't know about you, Martin, when, you know, like dad's father's day coming up, you know, there's this sort of, per it's almost like there's a perfect, these perfect role models. And now sometimes, do you ever feel that you can be a bit 
hard on yourself. Yeah, I think sometimes dads oh, yeah. compare mm. themselves to other people. And oh, yeah. My God, yeah. Like, I, well, like, me personally, I always feel like I'm not good enough for my kids. Like, my kids aren't going to look up to me mm-hmm. the same way that I look up to my parents. And I think it's a different, like, it's, um, it's, it's something that people shouldn't do in general is compare themselves to others Mm -hmm. and beat themselves up if they haven't got this particular job or they're not doing very well i i think the best you know i think the fact that your kids love you and call you mum or dad is probably the best encouragement any parent can have it doesn't matter what job you have or how big your flat or home is or how much that you earn it's seeing your kids grow into nice people is probably the most like rewarding thing in life and I think people should realize that more that what that once you have kids your life changes and it's all about them yeah a lot of time what you see is the perfect lives behind closed doors aren't perfect at all no, no way no. near so it's all a lot of it's fake anyway so no, it is. something that's not true <laughs> yeah there's a that comment here there's a comment here and um, someone said it's difficult to get the confidence to not only look after a child but to reach out to others without feeling like you're being judged i've heard that quite a lot that sometimes people feel it, if i if i ask for help people are going to think I don't know what I'm doing or they may think I'm a bad dad or a bad mum and I think that's a real sort of like it is quite a barrier to overcome and I think that's why it down it's a bit like us doing the hot spots and that that there's nothing wrong with asking for help and also to create at Danielson when people come we want to create this culture of everybody's welcome and you know, things do happen with our children, good and bad, but we're all here to support each other. And I think, and actually, we we really need those sort of spaces where we can actually be real and say, you know what, I'm really struggling at the moment. I've had no sleep yeah. last night. You know, I'm a bit worried about my job and all that sort of thing. To have this space to talk. And no, to it's share. true actually, because um, I because uh, because. Amanda has two co- uh, um, two cousins, uh, Stephen and Jason, that I used to ask for advice a lot. So I just want to say a big thanks to them because um, I used to ask them for a lot of advice, and um, because they've because they've had kids um, that are older than mine, and 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 it was nice to ask them for advice and get good advice from other parents. And that's why groups like this are so important to be able to speak to other parents and get advice. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because dads like me that had no kids need the help. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes people think, oh, I've got nothing to share with someone. I've got nothing to give. But even as we always say, the power of the smile and this and just that hello can make such a difference. I know Gina at the yellow. Um, can you remember Gina those in person sessions when again you'd be the one that would be helping get the fruit ready and the juice ready and playing with the children? What difference? I ask Gina now. What difference do you think that made to dads like? Um, Martin to actually have the fruit ready to give to the children what or playing with the children how do you think that helped a dad like Martin I think it makes them confident as well gets them you know to show to bring out their confidence and it's it's nice to see that as well because not when you play when you sometimes you go to play groups or parenting groups you don't really see that you know, yeah. you don't see the dads playing with the kids. You just play the mum, see the mums playing with the kids. So it's very nice to see that, and I think it's it's a good good inspiration as well. You know, to to see that that we got a dad zone as well, because not many places has got a dad zone. So it's very good to see that. 
someone is asking here, what age range does a child need to be to attend the dads groups? The dads group at Danny's End is called Dad Zone. There's lots of other dads groups, a lot of who let the dads out and lots of other things. Um, but it's saying, what age range does a child need to be to attend Dad Zone? Martin, how old were the kids that were coming when we, when we had our Dad Zone? Can you remember? Well, Maisie must have been about two. Yeah. Two or three, yeah. Um, because I know, because um, Riley was either born or, yeah, he yeah he must have been like a few months old, so he was too young to go. But three to, I I, I actually don't know how old um, 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 the eldest child was, but I would say two, two to a limit. Yeah. Two is a good, two to two is a good age because. You know, the child is interacting more and speaking and and wants to explore and learn. Yeah, I remember one dad coming with a baby in a pouch. So it would be a few months old and another toddler. Yeah. I remember when my children were little and the kids went off to dad's own or the youngest went because the other two were at school or something. And I remember thinking, hang on a minute. One of them's gone, but I'm left with two. And actually for the dad zone group, because the folks in getting dads there with their children, that we do sort of gear it and sort of stretch the age limit that the children can be like six, seven, eight. Yeah. Just to create that wonderful opportunity with, with dads. And um, I, th I think that's really, really vital. Someone saying it's good to see other children's reactions when a dad joins the group. They tend to gravitate towards the male boys and keep looking to see what the dad is doing. It's true. I felt that a lot at the normal group. I, I always felt when, when like, the toys and the balls had been thrown out, that every time that I was playing with them, loads of kids would like <laughs> just, just mm. like drift over to me and I was like oh my god like, <laughs> like what's going on here but it was great fun but I always feel like um you know I've you know like having a dad there um it's it's encouraging yeah it's good as well because you're you're giving back because you don't know some of these children they may not have a dad they yeah. may work silly hours or they might just have a really not Good dad, I should say. <laughs> and to have yeah. that male interaction, they're probably yeah, craving lot, it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of them don't have like a father figure in their life. Yeah. And um, they've probably never played with another dad or played with a dad. Mm. So then to have another man there at those groups that actually wants to uh, to actually play is, is something that they, they, they crave, yeah. you know, which is a shame. Yeah. Somebody's calling you here a dad. A dad magnet, <laughs> not a babe magnet. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one, isn't it? I like it, a dad magnet. But I do think, and I think dads who get down on the floor and play with the kids and just interact. And one thing I love about Daniel's Den is that when you go with your children, they, yeah, you can sit and play with your child, but your child may go off and play with somebody else whilst other children come and play with you. And I love that sense of community. Now, Linda and Gina on Saturday, you guys were doing something when Martin and Maisie came along. Martin, what did you go to on Saturday and what did you experience? Well, we went to Chalk Hill, um, can I say... A garden center or like allotment allotment <laughs> yeah 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 allotment and um well got lost um <laughs> <I'm> chasing <laughs> but, uh, down the road <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah so we done gardening and we planted um Maisie planted i can't remember what Maisie planted tomato was it a, a tomato uh, i i yeah yeah i knew it was a fruit but i couldn't think what fruit it was and then we made a flower bomb yeah. Very interesting flower bomb, or like, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, no, like it was no, yeah, like it was nice. It, it was something different, and I don't think a lot of kids or parents actually do anything like that. Is garden with their kids, and a lot of them don't know that there are places out there that do it, and 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 I and it, and it's something that kids and parents should do is 
garden. Yeah. Or garden in, sorry. That's terrible English. Garden. <laughs> what is, what is the garden in. What is the vision Linda, for the sewing seeds project and the allotment? What's the vision, Linda? Oh, sorry, I missed the first bit of that. Um, <laughs> for a child to be able to plant something that they can eat. Wow, yeah. So we have, so Gina, what have we got growing in the allotments? There's onions, there's potatoes, there's um, raspberries, oh, peppers, I think there was in there. Peppers. They're still here. <laughs> oh, sorry. There's all kinds of plants and vegetables. Corn. Corn, yeah, that's it. Um, beans, peas. Yeah. Sweet corn. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, courgettes. Wow. And there's loads more here to go. Um, and we were actually chatting because we've got um, a wildflower meadow area that we're developing. And we were talking about different ideas, maybe putting a hammock in there. So it's good chatting to Martin to get ideas. And um, I was telling him the other bits and pieces we were going to do, like the bug hotel, Hedgehog House, we'll have bird feeders and that, try and keep squirrels out. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yeah, well, but there's a lot more going to be done there, a lot more apart, apart from just growing fruit and veg. Yeah. Somebody else is asking the question, the dad's own, can uncles and granddads come too? Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. There, there was a few granddads there. Yeah. There and, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think that I really, I really enjoyed that. I've, I've really missed it, actually, because I think just meeting up with the dads and the granddads. Mm. And I think we were getting like 20, 25 dads there on a Saturday. Yellow, yeah, it was like lunchtime. Was it 12 to 1.30? Oh, my gosh. I 12 to 1, yeah. I, I can I hardly remember, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but all these different ways. And, and again... It's a bit like our Zoom sessions as well, isn't it? Like Martin, I, I always laugh about you because you're sort of saying, oh, I was a bit, you know, didn't know quite what to say, but I think you articulate so well your feelings, but also your questions and everything. And I think that's something in a couple of weeks, we're going to be having like a, um, a feedback time. And we love to hear what people are saying. And actually the, the Sowing Seeds Project came from a comment of a dad or partly at one of the dad zones and we'd met at our nativity play um and there were some old age pensioners there saying they had an allotment they didn't know how to dig it they couldn't have the energy and then a dad called alan at one of the dad zones was saying oh i'd love to have an allotment i want my child to see how fruit and vegetables grow and i love it that dads come up with these ideas and I think guys have and, and obviously the mums we all have these ideas and one of the things that Daniel's in about building community that we want to hear the ideas and build on them because they're the best ones it's all that thing about feeling part of the community and that's why we encourage parents to share their ideas we encourage parents to volunteer so Martin has volunteered to be um, a volunteer and I can count on one hand in fact almost on one finger how many male volunteers we've got is that right Linda yeah well yeah. We, do, we do have another one on the books but he, uh, he's very busy in his new job at the moment isn't he he is he is <laughs> but we do love to encourage dads because I think when people see um dads being involved as we've said that dad the Dad Magnet, I think that's going to be your new nickname now, Martin. You're going to be the DM. Do you like that? Yeah. The DM, yeah. The DM in his DMs. Or oh, oh, Magna Dad, sound like a superhero. Oh, yeah. and, and the, the net is on the ball. She says we have male trustees as well. We do. We have yeah. three male trustees or four. I can't remember. Oh, yes, thank you, Annette. We have lots of guys. Somebody asked a question. Now, I made a comment that you were coming on tonight, Martin, and somebody asked a question, and I wonder if you could enlighten us. It says, do your children like your hobbies? So I think the question is, do you have any hobbies? Do you have any 
time for your hobbies or has that sort of gone on the back burner since you've had children and oh yeah every hobby's gone out the window now <laughs> but I know you've got something in your house because you came I think it was a dad zone because who do you live with Martin well other than my wife and my kids yes um a a zoo <laughs> so I think this is a good hobby tell people about your hobby well it's not so much my well it's Amanda's but she's got six lizards and a tortoise okay <laughs> and we used to have a parrot but he's now gone he's gone to a place where they look after parrots because my god was he loud but, <laughs> uh, but yeah we've got six leopard uh six leopard what are they geckos six leopard geckos and a tortoise mm. and the kids love them like the kids love seeing because obviously like they, they see cats and dogs and pigeons every day <laughs> and like they're like they're not like because i used to have a dog and a cat and my kids are so used to it but seeing a mm. lizard and a tortoise like even every day i look at them going oh my god We've got a tortoise <laughs> and a lizard. <laughs> but yeah, but looking after them is is quite fun. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think that's the thing, isn't it, about sometimes, and I, and I know it's like being a parent, particularly of little ones, you know, you're doing, you're living your life, and then all of a sudden, as you say, Martin, you suddenly have this baby, and then it's all nappies and feeding and sleeping or not sleeping, that your life just completely changes but to have other things and other interests helps yeah and also helps them yeah because you could be doing something that needs to get done done and then you could say i'll oh, go feed the tortoise and it takes 10 minutes and that 10 minutes you you can get so much done but it works <laughs> it helps so much that's so true. That's so like true. the dad's top tip. tip oh, yeah. number one. <laughs> get a tortoise so your child has to go. And get a tortoise, yeah. <laughs> get a tortoise. And then all I remember is that tortoise being wrapped in toilet roll at a dad zone. On the oh, zone. yeah, I remember you telling me about that. <laughs> it was all of... Yeah, it was all was of, it our tortoise? It was, yeah, I think you're the only... Dan, you know, Daniel's down with a tortoise. I don't think, I don't think we have many tortoises. Oh! And they say would like to see some videos in Daniel's den of the zoo. Oh yeah, we got. Oh yeah. Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> oh, scary Mary. Scary Mary. Oh yeah. Martin, what about? I think my last question. We're, we're coming close to our end. What's um, the favourite book or story that you read to your children or with your children? Is there a favourite book in your house? Oh. oh. Or is that yeah. leave for Amanda to do? No, when uh, the 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 ninety nine um, um, treble winning season for Manchester United, I read it to them every night. <laughs> Get on to NSPCC. That sounds like a right pro. <laughs> no, I'm Ooh. joking. A guy called Stephen Cant here is saying you need to write a dad magnet top tips book i think we need to i think for father's day i tell you what we need to do we'll design a magnet and we'll see what top tips we can put on this magnet no oh, that's so true <laughs> i really want to do that now well i think i think you should do that i think now that you are the dm and i think we'll get people to put in their top tips the dag mag magnet but other than that silly book that you were talking about oh, yeah. <laughs> is there a, another book that your children like Maisie loves books about unicorns and fairies but i suppose that's quite girly um but i think the best book is we're going on a bear hunt because i try to read it like michael rosen does and Maisie finds it hilarious you know, Riley sort of understands what's happening, but I think books that you you can 
do actions to and do voices to kids love it wow so kids the, love it well the dm so dad magnet our next you'd be really pleased to know martin that our next craft book that book is in there and maybe who thinks in this zoom group the dad magnet should actually do a recording of the story so that yeah. all the children in dance with all the actions put your hand up if you think that should happen <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you know what? There's a video of him on YouTube doing the whole thing. He goes do 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 right, but I do it most nights, and they love it. I'm like Amanda loves it. She loves me doing it, but I could do it. I you know I could you need try. To see that? Oh, there's, 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 there's hands going up in the chat. Yes, he should. Funny voices rock. You gain a fan club, Martin. As yeah, the dad, actually, yeah. Mag oh, and Rush is going, go, Martin. With <laughs> Steve O'Can, his hands up. The boat's out. This hot spot tonight has just been fantastic. This is one dad coming th <laughs> through the hot spot. I think we're going to be seeing you again, Martin. I hope so. Yeah, well, I think it's I think it's really really good, and um, I think oh, I've enjoyed it. Good, I think Linda Jean and I, well, we're here every Monday night, and we're going to be here for three more Mondays. In fact, I think next Monday, why don't we do it, Dad Magnet number two, and gather all these tips and see if we can get any more dads in this group i think that would be really good or get some more comments because i know there was supposed to be a dad in here and he's not turned up so obviously he's busy doing something but um i think it'd be really good to follow this up because i think there's a lot more that needs to be shared and tips for dads and i think because sunday is father's day it's right isn't it it's Father's. Yeah. Day. i think to do a session this week and next week and then we've got two more weeks before the summer holidays and then in September, hopefully when we reopen our in-person groups in all our sessions, that the hot spots, I think we're going to do them once a month. But I think, again, creating this space for people, for us to share, for people to make comments, but also for people to just overhear a conversation. And I think, Martin, you've had so much to share tonight that's really encouraged us and everybody's listening. Annette's saying, great to see you, Martin. You've got a little fan club here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so that, that is just fantastic. Um, well, hopefully as well that it can make other dads want to join in because obviously other dads have different, you know, they have different opinions and, you know, they have different experiences. So hopefully more can join and we can all do we're going on a bear hunt. <laughs> oh my gosh, my brain's going off on. Yeah. on. Oh. Imagine a bear hunt round Wembley Stadium. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> I'll tell you what we've got. Oh, Martin, you're now a signed up volunteer for Daniel's Den. We're going to be getting you in on this, but I think I can see just, I think we just need to have a part two next Monday night. So hopefully you're not working and hopefully England aren't playing next Monday night, but we might do a part have two. Have a look. We'll, we'll have a look. Um, but it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Martin, for coming. Anytime. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, everybody, for watching and all the brilliant comments. Thank you. And we will get that dad magnet sorted out. <laughs> and we are going to be collecting top tips. So short, snappy. If you know dads, granddads, uncles, um, send them in and um, we will make a collection and maybe dad magnet may write his book with those top tips <laughs> okay wow, so, thanks everybody hope you managed to sleep tonight with all this heat but it's been a great um hot spot thank you so much bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thank you bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.